video, I am going to be showing you a really cute, funny little turkey design that has some buffalo plaid mixed in, as well as just these adorable little turkey faces with these really big blue eyes. I painted this with the new Madame Glam Sanctuary Collection, which is a whole series of really, really high coverage gels. They are so pigmented. They made painting this thing so easy. I hope you guys like this cute little turkey. I decided to do this one because I noticed one of my really old turkey painting videos is doing really well on my channel right now. And so I thought, hmm, if everybody's liking that one, maybe I should update it a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting. So here we are. I hope you like it and I'll see you all next time. Bye. So we are going to begin with the color pastel yellow pudding gel. This isn't from the Sanctuary Collection, but this is a fairly new color from Madame Glam. I found the pudding gels do a fantastic job of a chrome base, and I figured this pastel yellow would tone down my gold copper color. So I'm going to be using this really orange toned gold chrome powder to burnish that into the surface of the pudding gel and get a smooth chrome background. And the pastel yellow would underneath really kind of lighten that up so that the colors of the turkey showed off a little bit better than if I would have used black in the background. Now I'm using the color sunset in florida and i'm going to be painting five basically like leaf or petal shapes for the start of my turkey's tail feathers and this is a really beautiful red color usually gel polish does not want to paint on top of chrome because it the chrome is just so slippery that it doesn't want to stay but as you can see it is staying beautifully these colors are amazingly pigmented and so so smooth so there are the first five i did do second a second coat over the top of those the next layer of feathers is going to be the color no maps and that one is a like a burnt orange it's also a really pretty color so that is going to go in between the five of the red feathers and there will be four of them total now with black gel paint, I'm going to be outlining my feathers as well as painting the buffalo plaid over no maps, which is the oranger one. I'm not going to do the buffalo plaid over the red just because I want to keep a little bit of separation. And if it was buffalo plaid across all of them, I feel like it would just end up getting to be too much and you wouldn't necessarily see the individual feathers anymore. It would just look like a big buffalo plaid disaster sort of. So to do the buffalo plaid, start painting squares make sure that you try to leave an equal distance between the squares and make them about the same size and in nice little rows going along take your time painting the squares when you're painting them just kind of gently figure out where they go do line after line and after you have a row of squares done if it's especially in these skinny little feathers you really just have to do one row of those up the middle then in either direction from all of the squares paint stripes those little stripes need to always be in a consistent direction so if they're going from bottom left up to upper right which is what i did then that is what they have to do every single time so if they're a backslash they need to stay a backslash and so then after I've got one feather done, I'm going to do the next one. As you can see with my buffalo plaid, I am not keeping it consistent across all of the feathers where if you like lined them up, they would all be the same. What I'm doing is I'm making them all the way straight up and down each feather. So as you go through and do the next feather, realign your squares. So don't worry about the first one. I would try to make them about the same size, but then tip it so that it's the right angle for that particular feather. I'm going to continue that same process down on the ones on the side. Painting this buffalo plaid is a little tedious, but it is so relaxing once you kind of get into the groove with it. I should know because I painted a lot of buffalo plaid for this particular design. Um, but it's something that, like I said, as you get in the groove with it, as you start painting it, it was really quite enjoyable. So I've got those last little squares on the sides. The side feathers are much smaller than the ones that are up above because you don't get to see the whole thing. Once you're done with those, I'm also going to outline the red feathers just to kind of let them stand off against that chrome background, just like so. Make sure that they really show off. That chrome is against the thumb and against the ring finger. Now using a color that's actually, I believe, from last year's Thanksgiving collection. Maybe not, but I think so. It's called Taste Like Lamb, um, or last year's November collection, I should say. I'm going to use that color to paint my turkey's head, neck, and what is visible of the body. Depending on how long your nail is, how big your turkey is, you might see more of the body. and Or less, you know. I'm going to outline my turkey's body shape and head with the color black gel paint. And I'm going to doodle in the wings right now. I'm going to also add a couple little lines on the belly for a little fat feathers that are going across, make those really faint lines. Don't make them as intense of black as the outlines otherwise were. Now with white gel paint, I'm going to be painting my turkey's eyes. A lot of times I like to do my outlines of facial features first and then fill them in. That's the way that I've done it recently. In the past, I always did it the other way where I would paint the facial features and then I would outline them later. I guess it kind of goes back and forth now, but for a cartoon character, a lot of times lately I would do all of the outlines and then I would start filling in the eyes and stuff. I wanted to switch it up and do it more like the way that I did it originally in that other video. And to do that, I thought, you know what? This always worked really well for me. I'm going to give it a try again. 
So that's what we're doing here. I actually like it. I like doing it both ways. It's one of those things where if you haven't done much for this kind of an art before cartoon painting style, try it both ways to see what works for you. With the color follow me, I'm going to be adding some shading on my turkey's wings, tummy feathers under the chin, and then just around the eyes to make the eyes look like they're bulging a little bit. And then with road trip, which is such a pretty blue, I'm going to be using that one to fill in the iris of my turkey. So this blue color is a very, very deep, rich blue. As I'm spreading it out over the white, it does brighten a little bit in the thinner areas, which I really liked. I thought that worked well for this. If you were painting it over a nail that did not have a white background, I'm sure it would be one coat coverage and be absolutely stunning. So there's the other iris. After those are done, go ahead and cure them. And then with the color R we lost, which is a goldenrod type color, I'm going to be painting my turkey's uh, beak. I'm this one, I'm going to do mouth open. And then with Not Your Boo, which is also from last, a last year collection, I'm going to this shimmery holographic blue, add a little bit of brightness in the eyes, and then with Sunset in Florida again, the inside of the mouth and the waddle. And then back to black gel paint, outlining everything that isn't yet outlined. So that's going to mostly be facial features, adding in the iris, finishing off all of those other details that are missed if there is anything that you didn't do. When you're doing these little tiny outlines, especially if you're going around a, something that's already been filled in like the eyes, make sure that you have just enough gel paint on your brush to get you through. I like to load my brush, which means I like to dip it in pretty far and then I wiggle it against the side of the pot or against the side of my palette if it's gel polish. And then I try to brush off most of it. That'll leave enough paint in your brush to really get you through, but not too much. I gave my turkey some eyelashes and some eyebrows. And then the last thing to detail with the black, I'm going to add a couple little feather lines on the wings. After that's done, a few white highlights in the eyes, a little white highlight on the beak, and that nail's done. For the other nails, the accent nails, I'm going to begin with a coat of XOXO. And then on two of the nails for the French tips, I'm going to be using the color No Maps, which is the orange color. Clean up the smile line with a brush dipped into some um, isopropyl alcohol. Cleans up so easy. And then if you want to, like I said, this is one coat coverage. You could leave it just like that. I am a creature of habit and I did apply a second coat, but it really was unnecessary. And then with black gel paint, I'm going to be painting my buffalo plaid. You can see the process a little bit easier on these nails versus on the little turkey. So I painted two sets of parallel lines that are for the vertical lines of this section of the buffalo plaid. And then I'm going to cross those on the tops and the bottoms and fill them in. That gives me a really good base on a lot of different like checkered patterns. Then you would go in between them, but this is a Buffalo plaid. So you want to do everything in rows. I don't have much space to do this. So you're going to go left and right and see if you have room to fit in any more of a square in either place. If you do fill in what you can see of where that square would be. And if on any of these lines, if they get messed up, if you have not cured yet, you can use the same brush that you use to clean up your smile line to straighten out these lines. Super helpful if that is something that becomes becomes necessary. If there's a little, little mishap here or there, super easy to do that. You can also do that and go across the entire row to make sure that your lines are super straight if they seem like they're a little uneven. Now, after you're happy with all of your squares, go through, just like I said, backslash, backslash, and fill in the sections between the squares. This is same thing running up and down and left to right. As you're doing this, it is sometimes really weird to do this because I've painted so many checkered patterns where you want to do every other to kind of switch to just rows and columns. Took a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of like a mental block to get over. But once you have it, it looks so pretty. It is so autumn. It makes you get, have those like warm, fuzzy feelings that come with Buffalo plaid. And then after that nail's done, I'm going to just show you the background color, that red, see how well it paints for the sunset in Florida. Again, it is just such a rich red. Usually reds don't paint one coat coverage. They're a little bit um, sheer feeling. This one is not like that at all. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous color. Clean up that smile line, add your buffalo plaid, just like with the other ones. And then after you've done that across the other nails, the ring nail has the turkey, but a close up tipped upside down. I'm going to apply no wipe top coat across all of the nails. This is Madame Glam's shiny top coat, shiny gel top coat. After I have that applied on the nails that have chrome, make sure you do cap the free edges more so than normal. Just really want to seal those in. The chrome does have a tendency as all chrome does to kind of wear a little bit less nicely. But as long as you really cap the free edges, then you should be good to go. 
After that's done, I'm going to use the color Velvet, which is Madame Glam's matte no wipe top coat. And I'm going to apply that over my turkeys and over their tail feathers on the tune on the ring and the thumb. So this is going to essentially just leave the chrome shiny and everything else on those nails a beautiful velvety matte, which I actually think goes really well with the buffalo plaid because it makes it look a little softer. I do want to mention on the ring nail with my upside down turkey, I did not use no maps, the orange color. I just used sunset in Florida and then the background chrome color. So that one does not have all three of those for tail feather background colors. It just has the two. After all of those have been done and cured again, here they are. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. I will put a link to that previous video at the end of the video, as well as in the description box below. So if you're curious about my original crazy looking turkey video, definitely check that one out. It'll probably give you a laugh if nothing else, and I will see you all next time. Bye.